Hey guys, welcome to my video. Thank you for joining me for this build video. This is going to be my Salmon Nightblade build for the Greymore patch. Starting off, we are going to go over our gear. We have a Newman Acolyte 2H ball on our front bar with the Sharpen Trait. We are running the Master Bow on our back bar just for that extra weapon damage when we use our Poison Arrow and the weapon damage glyph on our back bar when we use light attack. We are running the Balorg mask and you are going to notice that almost all of these pieces are in tri-stat. That's just to give us a larger mag pool and a larger health pool so that we don't have to run the food buff that gives us health and stam. Rather we can just run the one that gives us stam and have a respectable amount of health still. Next we are running the Clever Alchemist Curus. We are running two pieces heavy and two and five pieces medium. Uh, our two pieces are gonna be the pauldrons and the curus. Uh, just because when it comes to getting these monster pieces, you take what you can. I got a pauldron, so instead of running the legs in heavy as I usually would, that I ran them in mediums because I already had the two pieces of heavy. We are running a new moon acolytes belt and hands and new moon acolytes boots with the Clever Alchemist Guards. Our jewelry is all infused with weapon damage in Clever Alchemist. I did have the gold to gold out this jewelry and it is one of my favorite sets so I did so. Going over our skills real quick, I'm gonna start with the front bar. We are running Surprise Attack. For our spam bowl, Relentless Focus is going to be part of our burst and our defense. And Rally is our main burst heal. Camouflage Hunter is on there ex almost exclusively as a slotted buff. We are not really using it very much because it is extremely expensive. And it is going to have a very small radius when used. Our executability is going to be Executioner. I choose this instead of Killer's Blade, mostly because I don't find myself executing at 25% as much as I find myself executing at 35 30%. That's usually where I start trying to take the enemy down the rest of the way. Our ultimate is going to be in-cap strike. When at 120 ultimate, you will be able to cast this and stun the enemy with the attack, which is very useful because it's within that same global cooldown you can use the next ability in much more rapid succession there is one thing when running this on a new moon acolyte build you do have to remember that 120 ultimate is more like 126 somewhere around there just because of the increased cost on our back bar, we are running the Venom Arrow so that we have the ability to interrupt our enemies from a distance. The Poison Injection will also work, but honestly, the damage that you will gain from that is not worth it in my opinion. Shuffle is a very good ability, especially in open world. You want to be able to remove those snares that people are going to be applying on you, and you want to be able to reduce the damage that you're going to be taking from area of effect attacks. Resolving Vigor is the most commonly used stamina heal. It is not intended to be used as a responsive heal, it is more as a defensive one. You want to use this when you're expecting damage rather than after you've already taken damage. Shadow Image, this is going to be a very important part of your kiting ability. You're going to want to use this when you are unable to get into your cloak because you are just surrounded by AoEs. So you want to drop that shade, get some distance, and then teleport back to that shade using your cloak afterwards so that you can escape if you are in a sticky situation. Shadowy Disguise is going to be more of an offensive ability than a defensive one. You want to use this so that you can make sure that you are going to get your critical attack when you initially attack the enemy and so that you can take them by surprise whenever they are trying to either fight someone else or they're not expecting you to be there. Precognition, I went for this morph as opposed to the Temporal Guard one because it is more useful to me to be able to 
deny someone stamp checking me than it is to have that extra 8% uh, minor protection from the temporal guard. I appreciate y'all watching my video and hope that you enjoy this build. I will be trying to put out more and I will be consistently trying to put out more PvP montages as Stem Blade and whatever other classes uh, y'all are wanting to see me play. If you are interested, please subscribe and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the video. Have a nice day.